Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, thank you very much for signing up and attending our webinar today. Um, as it's only five o'clock now, we're going to give it another, say, two to three minutes for everyone else to to join, and then we can get started. Okay, we can see the attendee number is still growing. Let's give it another minute and start at 5.03. Great, so it's five or three now. Let's give it a start. Um, I've got a bit of a cold today, so apologies in advance for any coughing. Um, welcome everyone to our webinar today. We're going to be talking about overhead lines, OHL, Gentile in North America, and the role in utility scale solar. Basically, what is the importance of these transmission lines in green energy infrastructure? Um, before we start, just a round of introductions on the speakers. So myself, Gonzalo, I work um, as an account executive at Rated Power since two years ago, focusing mainly on the UK and Ireland market. Um, and along with me is my colleague, Sukena, who is our product manager in charge of interconnection engineering. So she's very much been at the core of um, developing our solutions regarding OHLs, substations, etc. So she'll be the expert today. Um, going uh, taking us through all the all the technical information we're going to be discussing uh, next slide please um, and just you know some here bullet points of the agenda for today so the things we're going to be talking about first of all will be um, why is interconnection design important um, what are the different types of overhead lines say distribution transmission what are its components okay also, what are the main criteria we take into account in order to design and build a good solution for um, interconnection? Um, what ways are there to automate the basic engineering of these overhead lines? Um, and then we're going to be seeing how this can be done on our software, PV Design. And uh, following on this line in talking about our software, we're going to be also mentioning the future development. So um, the new features we're going to be working on in the coming uh, weeks and months um, in terms of overhead lines, which we hope will be um, useful for, for everyone here today. And um, the session will be around 40 or so minutes. The presentation will only be um, 25 to half an hour. So we will leave some time at the end for Q&A. So any questions you have, feel free to ask them. There is a 
um, chat box on GoToWebinar that you can ask the questions at. I will read the questions out loud and Sukaina will be able to respond to them. If we don't have time to respond to all your questions, don't worry, feel free to send us an email later on. Um, we can set up a meeting. We're always um, very happy to understand um, users or potential users' feedback. Um, as at the end of the day, you're the ones doing this work um, day to day. So no one knows better than you guys. Um, and just here to give some background on Rated Power and who we are, for those of you who are not familiar with us. So at Rated Power, we are on a mission to digitalize renewables. We develop deep tech, user-friendly and secure software as a service solutions, okay? Um, we've been focusing on um, PV Design, which is one software for a utility scale solar. Also, as of last year, 2022, we now are a part of Inveris, which is the world's largest provider of um, SaaS solutions for the energy market. Um, and then just some milestones of what we have achieved in the five years we've, we've been around for. Um, so we have over 160 customers all around the world on all continents, uh, which means more than 2,500 users. And our software, PV Design, has been used to simulate more than 11 terawatts of energy. So um, quite a big number there. We're quite proud of what we have achieved um, and excited to keep growing in this sense. Um, and anyway, enough of this. I'll pass on the floor to, to you, Sakaina, so we can start um, talking about overhead lines and hope this is insightful for everyone. Thank you, Gontaro, and thank you, uh, everyone, for joining us uh, today at this new webinar. Uh, so I will jump in directly to um, into the, su the subject. Um, so as uh, Gontaro mentioned, we're going to start uh, with a quick uh, discussion regarding the importance of interconnection as a whole and also the overhead lines specifically um, in the solar energy generation. Um, so uh, as you all know, the expansion of uh, clean energy, specifically solar PV, uh, have seen a big uh, growth in the last years and uh, it will continue to grow eventually. Um, this leads to um, a higher uh, or expansion of the transmission capacity um, and it will expand as well uh, even further. This expansion uh, of transmission capacity leads to the urge of having uh, an optimized infrastructure or designing infrastructures um, such as substation and overhead line that would allow and help the evacuation of this energy to the point of interconnection. Um, an importance that would uh, or that leads to um, having the design of this infrastructure at the very er uh, the very early stages of uh, the design of, of a PV plant. Um, this importance also is reflected in some processes such as the um, interconnection application. So now uh, several in several countries and several utilities they uh, need a lot of information regarding the substation and, and the overhead line uh, in the interconnection application process. And this um, leaves sometimes even developers uh, the responsibility to have or to give a rough or basic design of, um, of uh, this infrastructure. Uh, of the transmission lines uh, in order to complete their preliminary design. And these reasons were the reasons why we decided to automate uh, or um, help um, with the automation of this uh, basic engineering to let the user or allow the user uh, to quickly um, have a rough uh, or basic engineering design for these uh, infrastructures. And um, as you might know, um, beside the substation, the overhead line is uh, it acts like a bridge between the generation or between the source and the point of interconnection. It comes in different types, if we can call them types, uh, or maybe the nature of a service as transmission and distribution. Uh, as in, it's considered that the transmission line is a, the line that evacuates the capacity at high voltage in to very far uh, point of uh, of interconnections. Uh, on the other hand, the distribution line uh, are lines that uh, distribute the capacity in lower voltages, in medium voltage level, uh, to maybe a closer areas of distribution uh, from the from the solar generation or from the source uh, of generation. Um, and also, these definitions um, are actually um, not um, are not limited uh, because they differ from one country to another. From uh, a utility to another and that's why we made sure that in our software we give more flexibility for the user to be able to design uh, the type of the, the type of line they want with uh, the voltage they want and the capacity they want and that's why not only the voltage is very important for us as a parameter to consider in sizing the, the line the overhead line 
uh, but also the capacity that comes from the substation and also considering the capacity coming from the battery storage, um, if applicable, of course, uh, which is something that also can be designed on the software. And uh, from there, um, uh, this capacity or this uh, uh, capacity is considered uh, as um, uh, three main parameters for us that we link, uh, which is the voltage capacity and the length of the line that are very important for us. And uh, apart from that, we consider also the environmental conditions, which are very important, um, having a high temperature, uh, wind, um, ice, all of these uh, environmental conditions are important into calculating the electrical and uh, mechanical calculation, hence uh, sizing the, the overhead line. Um, um, quick question here, Suki. What about um, topography? Is it connected to these environmental um, parameters? Is it taken into account separately? How, how does it work? Yeah, good point, Gonzalo, because um, topography, of course, it's another important parameter. Um, uh, as you might know, um, the overhead line is an infrastructure that is very expensive. It costs a lot to construct an overhead line. And um, anything that could minimize the line uh, is very important. And having the elevation data or the terrain data of the whole route or path of the line um, that would help uh, decrease in this cost. Um, it could impact the number of, uh, of, the, of the towers themselves or the supports. It could also uh, decrease the height of um, impact, the height of the of the towers, and these directly impact the cost and reduces the cost of the line. So it is indeed very important. So thank you for pointing that out. It's another uh, parameter that uh, we also consider in in the software while sizing the the line. Uh, apart from that, of course, there are some electrical criteria that we make sure uh, that we respect. Uh, we also calculate a lot of electrical parameters, mechanical calculation. And uh, of course, at the end, we do the tower spotting. Regarding the electrical criteria, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there's always this relation between the voltage capacity and the length of the line uh, to make the line feasible, uh, if I would say. And this feasibility of the line that relies uh, on these three, um, three parameters uh, is also um, translated into the voltage drop um, limit. Uh, so it's something that needs to be respected. Uh, as well as the power loss uh, limit, the thermal limit, or even when the user selects uh, or chooses a certain conductor, uh, we need to make sure that uh, the voltage gradient uh, is respected in order to have uh, a correct solution. So all of these uh, criteria are uh, important for us and are considered by the software in order to give the user the best solution. Uh, as for the electrical parameters, when we say an overhead line, of course, it is represented by certain electrical parameters, by an uh, electrical uh, model. It could be a pi model, it could be a distributed parameter, parameter model. Uh, all of these models depend on the length of the line. We consider all of that uh, to calculate uh, parameters such as the resistance, reactance, uh, the capacitance, the susceptance. Um, also, we calculate the, the voltage drop uh, loss, uh, the joule effect, the corona effect in case uh, a corona loss happens. Um, then, of, of course, the, the power factor at the end of the line. So all of these parameters are, are calculated internally and automatically by the software, um, while keeping, of course, uh, the design or giving the, the best solution uh, in the design. Then, of course, uh, we have the mechanical calculation as well. Uh, we uh, at first uh, calculate the catenary curves of the of the conductors uh, of all the line, of course, for the conductor and for the earth wire. We calculate the loads uh, on the conductor, on the earth wires, on the insulators. Uh, we also calculate the forces on the on the on both the conductor um, on the point of the conduct the connection of the conductor and the earth wire. Uh, in different hypotheses, environmental hypotheses, and other mechanical hypotheses. And uh, we also, of course, calculate the towers themselves as supports, uh, meaning uh, we uh, dimension the top geometry of the tower automatically uh, by the software. And last but not least, the tower spotting, which is uh, a very important part uh, in the design uh, of an overhead line. Uh, so make sure that we have um, an algorithm that gives uh, an optimal and also a good solution uh, and a good way of placing the towers. And of course, by taking into consideration where the users or the input that the user uh, give us uh, regarding the placement of the towers uh, initially. And we base uh, that on our algorithm so that we can give them the best solution for, for the path. 
Um, by seeing all of that, uh, the best way to do is to actually jump in into PV Design and show you directly how uh, all of these inputs work and how everything is connected and how you can design that on PV Design. Um, so as you can see here, I already have like a design already made, but I can just clone it quickly. Uh, for uh, those of you who have never uh, tried the software, I've never seen the software. So this is a PV design software where you can design your uh, solar plant and, and also the interconnection part. Um, so uh, the first input that you will need uh, in order to work with the software is uh, to have a site or a placement. All you need to do is to uh, create a new site or upload a key ML. So if you decide to create a new site from scratch, we have this tool, which is um, an interactive site creator in which, uh, by which you can directly create one site. So we can, for example, here uh, choose an available area uh, that you can draw. Uh, where the structures are going to be uh, installed. You can also here uh, use another polygon called substation in order to set where your substation is going to be, the plant substation. And of course, you have here as a path, you'll find here the overhead line that you can, of course, um, route from starting from the plant substation to uh, your point of interconnection. So wherever the point of, of interaction interconnection is. Of course, uh, we're going to consider the points that you uh, put uh, or you place as placements of towers, but that's not needed. If you don't have an idea, you can only uh, introduce the first uh, the first or the initial um, point of the line to the, to the end point, and we can do the, the whole work of uh, designing the line with the spot and everything. So it's really simple. It's uh, simple and quick. That way you can have your, your site. We can here discard this one since we already have one, uh, which is this one that has an overhead line as well. Uh, so here uh, we're going to focus on the grid point section, which is uh, the, the one that is interesting for us, which includes the um, sizing of the substation and the overhead line. Here you can find a section of the overhead line uh, with some uh, newly added uh, inputs. The first input is the capacity overestimation. Uh, maybe it's, it could be named uh, differently in different countries, but it is the capacity that uh, could be considered for future uh, capacity increase. Uh, so we're going to, uh, in the software, we're going to need or use this capacity that the user introduces to uh, oversize uh, the overhead line for future uh, addition or increase of, of capacity. So for example, here we have 91.3 megawatt and we can just uh, simply add 8.7 uh, to reach a 100 or to size oversize our overhead line for a 100 uh, megawatt capacity. The second input is the number of circuits. So up to now, we have only two uh, circuits, either um, simple or double uh, circuit. Uh, we have uh, up to four um, conductors per phase that the user can choose, uh, bundle of four. And also you have here the selection of your, um, of your conductors. So in the uh, phase conductor, you have two types, the AAAC, which is the aluminum uh, conductor. And then you have the ACSR, the aluminum and steel conductors combined with steel. Uh, both uh, databases of both types of uh, conductors are extracted from the IEC standard. So these uh, conductors are all standardized. You can just select the cross section that you want or the conductor that you want directly. Um, then same thing for the earth wire. We have here a database uh, based on um, a manufacturer catalog. So we'll find here uh, different sizes and different types of uh, fiber optic or uh, OPGW uh, um, earth wires. And last but not least, we have here the tower shape. So as you can see here, we offer three uh, configuration. Uh, this is for the one circuit only. If you chose uh, two circuit, you will find different configurations for uh, double circuit. Uh, so you can just uh, go ahead and choose the, the shape that you would like or require by uh, the utility. Um, so once you generate the design, uh, here you can choose, of course, the language and the unit uh, of your uh, documentation and once it's generated you will find the results which we can uh, see or wait for this one uh, or maybe I get disconnected from never mind we can wait for this one but uh, on the meantime uh, the results that we give oh probably it's because uh, as you can see here we have a new release update and that's why I cannot access the results so I just need to update probably. Uh, so um, the ones that uh, we actually um, have or results that we generate are reports. These are reports for the overhead line um, and also a drawing uh, of the overhead line. So now see uh, it was just the updates. 
uh, in the result page here uh, you will see the overhead line and also as you can see here you can see it and also you can find here in documentation the overhead line report and uh, the overhead line layout at the bottom so we can uh, go through them quickly so if we download uh, the report we can go through the sections uh, and see the important chapters that we have and the results that we generate uh, so as you can see here we have a description of the overhead line uh, the general considerations of the line the line characteristics the electrical calculation mechanical calculations the tower geometry and finally the tower forces so we can go through them uh, quickly so as you can see here uh, we have some description of the site uh, or where the substation is description of the line you can see here uh, the number or the circuit arrangement the number of conductors per phase um, the type of the insulator both suspension and tension uh, insulators uh, so you'll find all the details here also you'll find uh, a long table depending on the length of the, your your line uh, that uh, gives the coordinate the coordinates of each tower and the placement of each tower of the line so you find here is we have a long line we have uh, a very large table and then we have here the consideration of the line the environmental conditions uh, the insulation coordination that is calculated in order to get the minimum clearances all the electrical clearances the mid-span clearances uh, as you can see here we give the mid-span clearances uh, phase to earth and phase phase uh, per block and also the minimum safety distances uh, that are also calculated based on the insulation coordination here you have a summary of these um, electrical uh, clearances or minimum clearances uh, then we have a section regarding or chapter regarding the line characteristic. You will find here a table that represents all the blocks uh, with the ruling span uh, from where it starts and where it ends, the length of each block, uh, and that goes for all the blocks. Uh, then you have a description of all the equipment, the tower, the conductor that has been used or selected by the user, um, the earth wire, also the um, insulators for the suspension type and the tension insulators. So you find their descriptions in there. And finally, you have here the electrical calculation, or not finally, because we have also the chapter regarding the mechanical one, but he will find all the parameters, the electrical parameters, calculation, uh, as I mentioned, inductance, impedance, capacitance, you have here this table with all the calculation. Uh, you will find the power factor and voltage drop reflected as well in another table uh, with their results. And finally, uh, the losses in another table uh, with a joule loss and also the corona loss if it occurs. In this case, um, it didn't occur. Uh, so that's why we have a zero uh, in the loss. Uh, in the mechanical calculation, uh, you'll find the details or the results regarding the load, uh, the load on the conductor phase, on the earth wire, on the insulator, based on certain hypotheses, the maximum temperature hypothesis, minimum temperature, maximum wind, uh, the everyday stress and the heavy load. Uh, so you'll find here a table with um, each uh, hypothesis and the corresponding uh, load uh, for uh, the, both the earth wire and the, and the phase uh, conductor. And the, then we have the insulator as well. Uh, same thing you have here, um, each type of insulator with uh, the minimum uh, failing load and the total load calculated. Then you have here a table to describe the different spans of the lines. We'll find here the span length, the wind span, weight span. Uh, so all the spans that we have basically. Also, it's very long since we have, in this example, a long line. Uh, a swing angle calculation, and then what is very important, which is the catenary. You find here results of the catenary, the sag, and the tension, the horizontal tension uh, for each uh, for each hypothesis, environmental uh, hypothesis, and that's per block. Um, you will find it for the phase conductor, and you also will find the results for the earth wire uh, uh, catenary. And uh, finally, uh, the tower geometry, uh, where you're going to have um, the dimensions of each tower uh, per block. As you can see here, um, these uh, towers are standardized as well. And you can find an illustration of the different dimensions uh, and uh, what they represent uh, from the table. And I think the last table regarding the tower forces on the phase conductor and on the, on the earth wire. So uh, all of them are... Uh, calculated for four different um, hypotheses, the maximum wind, the um, uh, maximum ice imbalance, and the conductor break. Uh, so as you can see here, we have find the vertical, the transversal, and the longitudinal uh, forces for all the hypotheses, and that is for, as I said, for the phase conductor and also for the uh, earth wire, uh, as you can see. 
So this is when it comes to the results, the electrical and mechanical results, but also we give uh, another uh, important uh, document, which is the drawing. And in this drawing, you will find here, as you can see, you will find a profile and a plan view of the line. You will find at the top on the right, uh, some notes regarding the characteristics of the line, uh, the number of towers, the number of blocks that we have, uh, the type of the conductor, the type of earth wire, insulators, all the details in here. And also we have uh, a legend uh, for uh, more or for readability of the of the document. Uh, if we go to the document in the profile view, you'll be able to find the coordinates of each tower. You'll find the height of the tower and also the um, deflection angle uh, in case of um, an angle tower deflection, you know, whenever there is a deflection basically. Then in the plan view you'll be able to see of course the insulators, the conductors and everything and also the elevation of each tower um, and also um, the, length, the line length, the span length and the ruling span of each block and the total length of uh, each section or each uh, part of the line and that is included in one page. And that goes, of course, uh, for the whole line. Uh, so these are like the main um, documents that we generate with the, with uh, all the results. Uh, another thing or last thing is the bill of quantity. So it's um, uh, the bill of materials that we have for the plant, for the substation. So we decided to include also um, a Google sheet also for the overhead line where uh, the user can find the elements calculated by the software uh, and their quantities. So as you can see here, it's uh, small, but it has the towers, the conductors, the insulators, uh, each type with the quantities, uh, the length of the, the total length of the cables, and also some uh, miscellaneous uh, elements such as the danger plates or the tower plates. Uh, so uh, this is um, what we actually or currently have on the weight shell. However, uh, we are planning, of course, uh, a lot of uh, developments uh, in the near future, in the long-term future, of course. Uh, so um, I just wanted to show you uh, some of them. Uh, so basically, uh, one of the, our projects that we're planning or the project that we're planning to work on this year or in the following quarters, the first one is the Flexible Interconnection Schema. Uh, which will allow the users to have uh, more than one substation, and that means uh, more than one overhead line in one site uh, that will allow them to connect uh, between the plants and substations using uh, overhead lines and then having uh, more than one substation and then connecting them to the point of interconnection with another overhead line. Uh, we plan also to have um, or include a restricted areas for the overhead line to allow the user to add restricted areas or restricted zones that could uh, represent uh, water bodies or buildings or anything that the user do not want to, to have um, the path uh, crossing and we will consider in the tower spotting. And also we're planning to um, release um, the overhead line elements in the CAPEX calculation to have it included in the CAPEX calculation. We would like to do the same thing for the substation as well. Uh, these are some of the few uh, developments that we're planning to do in the in the next quarters. Of course, we're planning uh, to have more discoveries and more releases in, in the following quarters, uh, not only for interconnection, but also for the whole software. And uh, all of these future development comes from directly from feedback from our users and also potential users. And that's why, as uh, Gontaro mentioned at the beginning, we encourage you to always send us your feedback, tell us about your needs. Uh, because we would like to consider them in our future developments and future roadmaps. So please feel free uh, to do that. Uh, am I right, uh, Gonzalo? Do you agree with me on that? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so following on this, if any of you have any questions, feel free to just um, drop a line on the on the chat box there. Um, and then we will we'll try to give an answer to any questions you may have. Don't be don't be shy. Okay. So one first question we have here is: Do you conceive including the overhead line losses into the detailed energy production? Uh, yes, actually, it's one of the of the strategies or the initiatives that we have in this um, in this year in 2023 is to include not only the weight shell but also the substation to include them uh, the detailed losses in the energy uh, Excel sheet that we provide in the software. 
So yeah, it's uh, one of the, the important projects that we're going to have this year. Right. Okay, we have um, a couple more questions here. Um, the first one, could this be used for 34.5 um, kV distribution line? Sometimes in wind farms we have overhead sections with up to four circuits. And two, do you already have a design with uh, one second with wood poles? Uh, yes, it could be used for for uh, medium voltages, uh, the medium voltage or high voltage. Um, well, for us, the medium voltage goes from five kilovolt in the software up to forty five kilovolt. So you can use it for distribution line, of course. You can decide on the number of circuits that you want. Uh, one thing maybe that I didn't show in the software or directly on the interface is that if you, uh, for example, have um, or chose a certain combination of input that would uh, conclude in having a bad design, you will get uh, warnings telling you that uh, this specific parameter, such as the voltage drop limit, is going to be exceeded or the power loss or, or something else. And we're going to suggest um, to change a certain input. But yes, you can uh, design using a 34.5 kilovolt. Um, and uh, with the number of, of uh, for now, we don't include the four circuits. We only include two circuits, but you can uh, choose one and two. Uh, and for the wood poles, uh, for now, we didn't include them. We only have the steel pole, uh, steel uh, poles or towers. Uh, but we're going to take note of this uh, of this feedback. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Suki. Um, there's a couple of questions here that um, I can respond to. We are going to email a recording of the webinar afterwards, um, so you will have access to the webinar um, after today. Also, we will be sending the slides over. And also for these, those of you asking whether this can be used for wind farms as well, at the moment, um, PV design is exclusively for utility scale solar. Okay. So um, a couple more questions here. Um, Suki, what is the maximum and minimum voltage rate, rate allowed by the software? Uh, for now, the minimum is uh, 5 kilovolt and the maximum is 400 kilovolt. Um, however, uh, we've received many feedback that people would like to design substations and overhead line uh, in extra high voltage. Uh, so we're planning to do a discovery to understand better um, how or when it is used to have uh, high extra high voltage more than 400 kilovolt so that we can um, um, have it in the software as well and let the user uh, do it. But currently, it's between 5 kilovolt and 400 kilovolt. Great, thank you. Um, also, what kind of services the software can provide for the underground electrical line? Uh, currently, for the underground uh, line, we do not do the sizing, uh, but it's something that we do have uh, in mind. Uh, we receive this feedback from specific uh, users and or clients in different in specific countries, so we have that in mind. Uh, our idea is to have uh, a complete overhead line um, feature that uh, meets the needs of our clients first before jumping into the, the underground. But of course, uh, if it is something that we receive as a feedback more often, uh, we're going to probably uh, prioritize it and consider it in the, in the future. Great. Thank you. Um, from cost perspective, say in percentage, what is the difference between the river crossing overhead line compared to a flat ground overhead line? Uh, between the flat and what's the other one? I'm sorry. R river see. crossing. River crossing. OHL and um, flat ground OHL. I would say the river crossing would cost uh, more uh, eventually because uh, river crossing. Um, uh, and has a need of bigger uh, towers, that means, uh, or stronger towers. Um, and usually they are of, not suspension, they're usually uh, tension towers, so they cost even more. Um, so I would say the river crossing uh, lines cost more, uh, definitely. Great. I see some of you are asking about um, PV Design subscriptions. Um, you can always go to our website, ratetopower.com, and request a demo there to get in touch with our sales team, who will um, give you a technical demo of the software and, and show you through the different subscriptions and how we can adapt to, to your needs in, in that sense. Um, another question here, well, actually two questions related to this. So um, what standards are support, supported by the software? IEC, UL, SANS, BS, and F? And someone asking something along a similar line. So, 
can how can this be customized by country or is it only under such certain standards mm -hmm. which are they yeah, currently in, the, in this first version, we decided to use the IEC, which is the international um, standard or mostly used in Europe. Uh, so we are sizing uh, the weight shelf based on the IEC standard and mainly. Um, but of course, we're open to, to get more feedback about this and to understand if there are more users who would like to have more uh, standards based on countries or, um, or to give us feedback about their standards so that we can understand them analyze them and see if there is a possibility to include them. However, for the substation, just to mention, uh, there is a possibility to uh, size it uh, either uh, according to IEC or IEEE. Uh, so just uh, for you to know, you have the two options. For the WHO, uh, for now, it's only IEC. Brilliant. Um, is there any standard of reference for the architecture of the medium voltage topology? I want to use radio or ring topology. Uh, honestly, I don't know, but um, after the webinar, maybe we can. I can refer you to a person or team who can uh, answer your question regarding the MV topologies. I have more knowledge about this uh, subject. Great, that's something. Yeah, we can follow up on after after the webinar. Okay. Um, another question: Could this be used for all the electrification part? So. Um, what this person is saying is they would like to have the electrification and distribution parts in low and medium voltage. Uh, well, currently it, we are using only the NV and HV side uh, voltage. Um, if they can be, uh, if you can give us more insight maybe on this point to understand better how or uh, why, what are the usages of having uh, an overhead line for, for lower voltages? But for now, we are, we're only doing it for, for, to tra for to transmit basically from the solar plant to the point of interconnection, and that's from the medium uh, voltage to the high voltage, up to the high voltage. But please, uh, just feel free to give us more insight so that I can, can understand better your uh, your question. Okay, another question is, PV design suitable to size HV DC transmission lines? If not, is this something in our future plans? Unfortunately, it is not yet, um, but why not? It could be maybe uh, in the future. Uh, we do not have it uh, really, we don't have a visibility regarding this in the near future or this year at least. Uh, but if we start receiving this feedback, uh, we'll probably uh, look into it. Great. Um, so we're seeing other questions here related to underground lines and how um, they're the most significant, for example, in, in Germany. Um, mm -hmm. uh, this is something we are looking to um, work towards in, in the future or? Yes, exactly. Like as I mentioned, uh, we understand that in certain countries such as Germany, UK maybe, um, they lean into uh, underground lines. Um, uh, we would like to understand um, the use of the underground lines to understand uh, the calculation, uh, part of the consideration and everything in order to do that. But for now, um, we do not plan to do it uh, really soon. Uh, however, it's not something that we discard because, um, as I mentioned, uh, we started with the overhead line. We would like to give um, a complete solution for the overhead line, cover all the feedback and all the parts of the overhead line, including KPEX in the energy calculation and everything. And then afterwards, uh, why not uh, include the underground, of course. Great. Um, is there any consideration towards crossings with other OHLs? Uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, for now, we, we do not consider the crossings. Um, we do not consider crossing uh, with uh, between lines, and also we do not consider crossing of rivers. Uh, but it is it is a feedback that we already received, so we have it uh, we have it noted. Let's see if we have any other question. We have another minute or two, maybe. So please feel free to add your questions. Um, there's a few more still. Um, do you consider overhead line designs with sets of insulators? 
Uh, yes, uh, we do. Uh, we actually uh, automatically calculate the set number. Uh, it could be one insulator, two insulators, or even four insulators. So that's for now it's done automatically. Uh, maybe in the future we'll include that in the input uh, to let the user customize and choose the number of sets of insulators they would like uh, to have in their lines. But for now we, we're doing it automatically, but we're considering it. Great, thank you for that, Sukaina. Um, sure. Okay, so this is about as much time as we had planned for today. I am aware that there are some questions still pending and answer. So we'll make sure to get back to you um, by email um, after the webinar so we can answer any questions you may have. And again, feel free to get in touch if you have any any feedback or any of these points we commented today of over headlines. If you wanted to to have a chat with us about this, it would be it would be great for us to to understand your your insights as well. Again, thank you very much for attending today. Thank you, Sukaina for your very Thank insightful you. and interesting presentation and have a great rest of the day everyone. Thank you all. Have a good evening.